In this video, we're going to continue our exploration of this concept of adverse selection. Adverse selection in the presence of asymmetric information, information that a firm like an insurance company has a hard time getting. If they have a hard time getting information from people who need insurance, they can't calculate the probabilities accurately for people they insure for various medical treatments. One way to overcome that asymmetric information is to allow companies to request information from consumers. However, if consumers push back and demand privacy, government might block an insurance company's ability to gather that kind of information. If that happens, then the insurance company might have to resort to statistics. They might have to put people in categories. And then they look at the averages. They'll look at the average money spent by group one versus group two on medical procedures, which is kind of unfair because group one, there might be a bunch of people who are healthy and a bunch of people who are unhealthy. And the, the people who are unhealthy raise the average for those who are healthier, who are getting exercise, who have proper diets, healthful whole food diets. And so when that happens, if the insurance premiums people pay are based on group statistics, then people in a group that has a high insurance premium, because that group tends to use health insurance more, people in that group are going to be upset because they're doing everything right. They're eating healthy and they're getting exercise. So then government might come in and say, we're going to not allow insurance companies to charge groups different premiums. And what that amounts to being is a price cap for one group and a price floor for another. A price cap doesn't allow the premium to go higher than it. And that results in a huge quantity of demand and a small quantity of supply. A price floor, on the other hand, doesn't allow the price of the premium to go below it. And that results in lots of quantity supplied and very little demand. And this is why I believe that whole groups of people choose to be uninsured because they're faced with this price floor. When companies can't get information on individuals' eating habits, exercise habits, and overall health status and family history, and the government imposes equal premiums across groups, the people who are healthy invest a lot into food, into exercise, and they feel that that premium is too high. And so they'll uninsure. Whereas people who have poor diets, don't get as much exercise, make unwise lifestyle choices that increases the risk of them needing these surgeries and medical procedures. They're the only ones that select to have insurance. And so you get this adverse selection. The adverse selection model suggests that low-risk individuals will forgo purchasing insurance if the government mandates a uniform premium for all, as seen with the Affordable Care Act. This policy effectively creates a price floor for low-risk individuals, a price ceiling for high-risk individuals. To mitigate this, the AC introduced an individual mandate requiring everyone to have health insurance or face a federal tax penalty. Additionally, the ACA aimed to reduce overall health care costs and improve affordability through cost-sharing mechanisms like deductibles and co-pays. The following analyzes the effect that the ACA has had on medical services, prices, total health care expenditures, and the quantity of medical procedures demanded as measured by medical treatment put-offs. You use a time series chart in this article which I've already opened over here, to complete the second column of the following table. The second column of the following table is percent put off. Use the per capita out-of-pocket expenditures in constant $2022 time series plot in this article, which is over here, to complete the third column of the following table. So let's do the second column first. I'm going to scroll through the article. And here we have record high in U.S. putting off medical treatment due to cost. Within the last 12 months, have you or a member of your family put off any sort of medical treatment because of the cost you would have to pay? In the year 2001, medical put-offs is 19%. So I'm going to put 19 here. And in the year 2022, medical put-off is 38%. And in the other article, we have total national health care expenditures. But I want per capita out-of-pocket expenditures. Per capita controls for population increase. And I want the ones in constant U.S. dollars. So it's the blue line. So in the year 2001, in the year 2001, each American spent 
$1,088. In the year 2022, each American spent $1,425. And I got the answers correct. Now, I'm going to have you go through and fill out the other years from 2002 all the way through 2020. Again, you just use the two articles. Now, you got to be really careful with it because for each one of these answer boxes, you only get two attempts. So if you get it wrong the first time, make sure you have it correct the second time. Upon completing the analysis that follows, you'll be able to determine if rising healthcare expenditures is fueled by higher prices or greater access to healthcare services, higher quality demand. If the latter is the case, most would consider it acceptable. If the former is true, rise in medical prices are increasing medical expenditures and reducing access to care, the public would not consider that acceptable. They would probably consider it a failure. Now, to do this, we're going to copy the values in the table above to an Excel worksheet so that the word year is in cell A1, percent put off is in B1, and dollar spent is in C2. And then the final row of data is in A24, B24, and C24. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to analyze different data. This data set here is different. This number is 19. This number is 19. But this number is 1086. And then down here, this number is 38. This one's 37. And this one's 1423. So this is similar data, but I've altered it just a little bit so that you have to compute the values down here and answer these questions according to the actual data. I'm going to answer these questions using my simulated version of the data. With the data copied from the lesson to Excel, the first thing I want to do is I want to insert a column between columns B and C. So I'm going to click on column C. I'm going to right click and insert. Now in the new cell C1, I'm going to type QD for quantity demanded. We're going to create a proxy for quantity demanded. Put off is you're not purchasing the service because you can't afford it. So you're putting it off until a later date. The higher that is, the lower quantity demanded for healthcare services. The lower it is, the higher the quantity demanded for services. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to type equal, and then 100, then minus, and I'm going to click the left arrow button to get the percent put off in column B. I'm going to press enter. Think of this as a proxy for quantity demanded. Why? Because the lower these values, then the higher the quantity demanded. The higher these values, the lower quantity demanded. So we're going to kind of do a flip on that. And then I'm going to drag this down to fill all the cells. I'm going to delete the one in row 12. Now, the reason why we have a gap here, in the year 2011, the Affordable Care Act was in place. In 2010, it was enacted. Th these are the values after the Affordable Care Act, and these are the values before the Affordable Care Act. Okay, so now we can answer this question here. I'll let you answer that on your own. I've already mentioned it, so I'll leave that to you. Highlight cell C2 to D24. So you can do that with your left mouse button. You can hold it down to capture all this data, or you can click one click cell C2 and then Hold down shift and control, and then hold down the down arrow button, and then click the right arrow button. You can capture all the data. And then we're going to go to insert, recommended charts. We're going to pick the scatter plot. And here's a scatter plot of the quantity demanded and the money that is being spent. Now, this isn't the demand curve. Money being spent, you can think of that as price times quantity. Suppose you had four operations done and each operation cost $4,000. The amount of money you spent is four times a thousand, which is 4,000. When we're looking at money spent, we're not looking at price. We're looking at price times quantity. You can think of money spent as revenue. We have to figure out how to pull the price out of there. This is an interesting relationship. As the quantity demand increases, we see a reduction in the money spent. Right click on one of these dots here. I'm going to add a trend line. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to click on display equation and display R square. I'm going to get rid of the title. And then I'm going to click on the equation and the R square. I'm going to move it. Click on the three bars. I'm going to change this to number. I'm going to change the number of decimal places to six. 
Because in the instruction over here, it says you want the values in the equation to have six decimal places. Now your slope is going to be different than mine. My slope, let me blow this up. I'm going to increase the font to 14 so I can see it better. I'm going to change the variables to red. This X here is actually quantity. And this Y here is spending. I'm going to change it to S for spending. This value here is the slope. The negative slope says what? A one unit decrease in the quantity demanded for medical treatments is associated with a $12.84927 increase in healthcare expenditures. The negative means this decrease is associated with an increase. Now we wanna round the number of decimal places to two right there, unless it's otherwise noted. I'm gonna change this to 0.85. I'm not gonna press enter because I'll get it marked wrong. Because again, I'm using simulated data. You're gonna be using the actual data. R square is this value. I'm gonna copy this value. I'm gonna put it down here. I'm gonna put the R square here. It's generally denoted R2. I'm gonna paste the R square from the chart there. I'm gonna paste it right here too. Again, your R square is gonna be different than mine because I'm using simulated data. Now I want this in two decimal places. So I'm gonna delete these four numbers here and leave it as 0.43 because this is four. If it had been five, we change this to 44. So take the square root of R square, which I'm gonna do right here. Take the square root of it, you type SQRT, click on the copied uh, R square in the graph. Now the line is downward sloping, right? So the correlation is gonna be a negative. So I'm gonna put a negative in front of the SQRT and I get a negative correlation of what? The two decimal places, mine is negative 0.66. Now I can actually calculate the correlation here by just typing equal core rel. I can highlight the quantity demanded column. And I can do the same thing with the third column, dollar spent. And I get the same exact number, don't I? The wide gray bar, again, a before and after of the Affordable Care Act. Expenditures per American before the ACA was enacted averaged what? Expenditures before the Affordable Care Act. Let me move this graph here. The expenditures before averaged what? In my simulated data, $1,235.60. What was it after Affordable Care Act? What I'll do is I'll drag this down. I'll double click on the after. And I'll come up here and I'll just pull this blue box down. And I'll grab the last two. And I get a higher value. Before and after average expenditures per American increased. Now it's asking for the average quantity demanded. This one is unitless, right? Because this is a proxy. As this goes up, this goes down. The average quantity demanded before the ACA was enacted equaled what? 73.3. After, it was 69.58. The enactment of the ACA is associated with a blank percent decrease in medical treatments demanded and a blank percent increase in healthcare expenditures. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the percent change. The percent change, we type equal and then the parenthesis. We take the after value, subtract off the before value, and then we divide by the before value. I'm going to change that to percent and two decimal places. Then I'm going to drag it across. I have a 5.07% decrease in quantity demanded. You're going to have something similar. And a 7.47% increase in healthcare expenditures. Suppose the demand for medical treatments is given below this downward sloping line and this equation, with quantity demanded at 880 before the enactment of the Affordable Care Act. At that quantity, the price of the medical treatment would be what? Well, I'm going to copy this equation here. I'm going to type price here, quantity here, and expenditures, spending here. I'm going to paste that equation right here. I'm going to multiply the slope. So I get this value here times the quantity. I'm going to click on this cell C31. I'm going to press enter. It doesn't like this long dash, so you want to change that to a small dash. And when you change it to a small dash, all of a sudden, the blue box appears. So I got the intercept minus the slope times C31, which is now in blue. I'm going to hit enter, and I get the price. I'll change that to 
two decimal places. Now the quantity is given to me at 880. So I'm gonna change this to 880 and I get a price of 1360. Now let's just kind of look at it. 880 is right in here somewhere, right? It's closer to 1000 than it is 500. So it's in here somewhere. It's almost 900. I'm gonna go up until I get to the demand curve. And when I touch the demand curve, right, I'm at a value that is greater than 1000, closer to 1000 than 2000. So this seems reasonable. What I can also do is I can copy this. I'm gonna copy everything but the D. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna put it in Desmos. Choose a range for the Y values and choose a range for the X values. So the X values go from what looks like maybe minus 200 to 1500. So I'm gonna change this to minus 200 and then change this over here to 1500. And then the Y axis, it goes from what looks like minus 200 to 5,000. I'm gonna change the color to black. So this line here is that line. And then I can substitute in a value for Q. Q is the X variable. I'm gonna set Q equal to 880. I'm gonna change this to black and then I'm gonna change it to dash. I'm gonna change the thickness to one. Then I'm gonna show you a trick here. The price here of the intersection is 1360. That's the value I got in Excel, right? That's the value you got in Excel, 1360. I'm gonna put a squiggly bracket here. I'm gonna have Y less than or equal to 1360. I'm gonna have it greater than or equal to zero. So zero. And that traps, if you notice, it traps this line segment between the height of zero and the demand curve. I'm gonna put 1360 right here. Total expenditures would be what? To get the total expenditure, you multiply the quantity, 880, times 1360. 880 times the price, 1360. And this is in millions of dollars. You want to divide the whole, that product by a million. That's a thousand, a million. And we're going to round to three decimal places. So this eight makes that six, seven. So I'm going to make that six, seven. And notice what happens down here. When I press enter, it draws this blue box here. The height of the blue box is the price, 1360. The width of the blue box is the quantity demanded, 880. The area of the blue box is total expenditure. Also, if I go straight up on this dashed line to this gray curve, the gray curve is not drawn to scale. You can see down here, it's the revenue, it's the expenditures, right? If I go straight up to this curve, this height is $1.197 million. This is not the scale. Now it says use the percentage decrease in the proxy for quantity demanded to compute the quantity of medical treatments demanded after the Affordable Care Act is enacted. In my simulated data, I had a percent change of quantity demanded equal to negative 5.07%. In the actual data, the percent change in quantity demanded is negative 5.02%. I'm gonna use the actual percent decrease in the proxy for quantity demanded to calculate this quantity here. And the way you do that is you type equal and then you use the arrow up key to get the quantity before the Affordable Care Act was enacted. We're gonna multiply that by uh, parentheses, one plus the percent change. And the percent change is negative. So this is gonna be a lower number than 880. And we want two decimal places. So the quantity went from 880 in my graph to 835.8. Notice what happens to the price. Using my equation here from the graph, using this equation, I'm multiplying the slope times that 835.8, and I'm subtracting that product from the intercept. And I get a price equal to 1,500 and $30.71. Total expenditures, you can do that in Excel here. I can multiply this times that and I get total expenditures with two decimal places. I wanted millions of dollars, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna divide it by 1 million. There's 1,000, 1 million. And then I wanna reduce the number of decimal places to three. Now I can do that in Desmos too. 
when my X is equal to 835.8, I'll change this to black as well, dash, change that thickness to one. The price is $1,530.71. The same thing I got here. So again, I'm gonna copy this, this stuff in the squiggly brackets. I'll paste it here and I'll change this maximum value that Y can be to $1,530.71. So I can see there's a movement along demand. Maybe what I'll do is I'll change this to blue or this to red and the before to blue. So if the blue is before, the red is after. You can see there's a movement along the demand curve up the demand curve. Expenditures is the new quantity times the new price. And then I'm gonna divide that whole thing by a million because I want it in millions, 1.279. If that were five, six, seven, eight, or nine, this 79 would be 80. But since this number is four, three, two, one, or zero, this remains at 79. That's our new total expenditures. After the price of the medical treatment increased by blank percent, what did the price do here? We had to calculate the percent change in the price, right? The percent change in the price is what the price is minus what it was, 1360, divided by 1360. We're gonna multiply that by 100 to get a percent. So the price increased 12.55%. When that happened, the quantity demanded, let me press enter here. When the price increased 12.55%, quantity demanded went from blue to red, it decreased. What did expenditures do? Expenditures, using the same equation, Expenditures are, after the ACA, 1.279. Before the ACA, they were 1.197. And both those numbers are in millions of dollars. Now we can verify the numbers in Excel. I'll move these down. So when the quantity was 880, the price must have been 1360. And expenditures in millions of dollars was 1.197. After the price goes up to $1,530.71, the quantity is 835.80. It decreased. Expenditures increased in millions of dollars. The percent increase in the price, what the price is, B32, minus what the price was, B31, that difference in parentheses divided by what the price was, 12.55%. I can drag that across here. Quantity demanded went down 5.02%. Spending went up 6.9%. Now I can calculate the price elasticity because I've been able to decompose price from the spending and the quantity demanded. And I get, for elasticity, I get the percent change in the quantity demanded divided by the percent change in the price. And my elasticity, two decimal places, I'm going to change this to number. My elasticity is at negative 0 0.40. When the elasticity is between zero and one in absolute value, it's inside what is called the unit circle. When it's inside the unit circle, we say demand is inelastic. I guess we gotta make that positive. Medical care prices rose from before the Affordable Care Act to after the Affordable Care Act. With elasticity, of about negative 0.4 here. Prices are rising. Quantity demanded is falling. Expenditures are rising. If prices continue to rise, then quantity demanded will continue to fall. Expenditures will rise, but they'll rise at a decreasing rate. Expenditures will rise until we reach a peak on the expenditure curve. At that point, prices have risen, quantity demanded has fallen. Revenue is maximized at this point. At this point, elasticity is minus one. If prices continue to rise, quantity demand will continue to fall. Expenditures will start to fall. When prices get up to this area, access to medical care has shrunk, shrunken a lot. And expenditures are coming down because maybe even people in the upper middle income bracket are having a hard time purchasing medical care services because prices have gotten so high. So more and more of the population will put off 
medical care expenditures. The question here is, do the planners in the federal government understand this? I'll leave that for you to answer. 